What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the King's Court Podcast with me, Vincent Miracle, here for fansided.com, goldengatesports.com, and satkingsnation.com. So be sure to go all three of those websites for all your daily Kings news. Joining us today is special guest CJ Maffris. He's NBA Hounds writer for the Boston Celtics and the Portland Trailblazers. CJ, say what's up to everybody. Well, hello, and thank you for having me on this wonderful podcast. Hey, no problem, man. No problem, man. Love having guests, especially for websites that uh you know we both write for at certain times you know what i mean so it's, yeah. it's pretty cool but uh we won't you see got you guys see the show title right here demarcus cousins and rudy gay has been shut down for the rest of the well, three games of the nba season we're definitely going to hit on that we're going to get onto some playoff topics since the kings aren't in it at least we can talk about some teams that are going to be in it and then just a little side note yes i did see the news that david stockton was signed today for the rest of the season and the rest of next season so we might touch on that it just depends on how this conversation goes but CJ, what are your thoughts on Rudy and DeMarcus Cousins being shut down for the remaining three games of the season? I might be in the minority of this, but I'm sure there are a lot of NBA experts that think, oh, thank God Rudy Gay isn't playing anymore, considering he's such an analytical nightmare when you look at the numbers of when it comes to efficiency. And this not particularly this year, but just in general, when you look at some of the numbers of what he can do and how he can be detrimental. But I actually think it's kind of a downer that both him and Cousins aren't playing. Obviously, Cousins, who wouldn't want to see him playing, especially with how enigmatic. It's almost like he's a bigger version of Rajon Rondo, where you don't know what he's going to do. He's very misinterpreted of different types of demeanors that he shows on the court, but he's such a pleasure to watch. Like You see highlights of DeMarcus Cousins all the time running the fast break, and this is not Kendrick Perkins running the fast break. He actually has good handles. For a big man, he can go coast to coast for a layup or a dunk, and it's really a shame that they don't get to play for the next three games. I'm sure fans are pretty upset because those are their two best players. Right, yeah. See, for me, it's 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 a logical sense. The Kings aren't playing for anything. You know, Cousins has been dealing with injuries since basically right after the All-Star break. Rudy Gay, he, he's been dealing with an Achilles injury. You really don't know what you're going to get from both these guys, and do you really want to injure them for the future? I guess it depends if Gay wants to stay, which I'm sure he does because of that contract. I mean, I don't think he's going to be getting that anywhere. But if I was the Kings, it's almost like what the Oakland Athletics did with John Lester, where they were just keeping him out there for so long because while they thought that they had a chance to re-sign him, in case they didn't and they wanted to make a push for the playoffs, which, again, is different from what the Kings are doing, they might as well ride him the whole way. But you're right, because there is no playoffs in sight. Uh, Gay will probably stay. DeMarcus will probably stay. It was probably the better move to do it. It's just a bummer, you know? Well, yeah, because well, both con- both Rudy Gay and Demarcus Con- Cousins are under contract. Cousins got a max deal earlier this season, and then Rudy Gay mm-hmm. got signed for a three year contract. So they're they're both going to be signed off for the future. The biggest question now going into the off season after Cousins and now Gay has been shut down. Rudy Gay and Cousins have been putting up some monster numbers, but yeah, are they both good to be on the same team? under George Carl's system. And that's been the biggest question so long. And what Rudy Gay has been doing when Cousins is out has been phenomenal. What Cousins has been doing with Rudy Gay has been phenomenal. Triple doubles. He's got, he got back-to-back triple doubles. That makes three in his career. You know, Rudy Gay is putting up phenomenal numbers, shooting three-pointers, hitting the mid-range jumper, and still finding other players as well. But which one fits George Carl's system best? It, it's a big question. And I, it's going to be a coin flip because I honestly see – I would be pretty surprised if you see both these players on the roster in coming next season. I honestly would be too, but I have a feeling, even though I think Gay is a better fit for the system, I think they would probably keep DeMarcus Cousins more just because of how much of a premium a good center is, and especially in this uh, day and age in the NBA. But when it comes to the system, I'm not saying Rudy Gay is anything like Carmelo Anthony, but I definitely can see George Carl using him like a Carmelo Anthony. Now, Anthony was a little bit bigger and wider, so he could play the four, unlike what Rudy Gay. I think Rudy Gay is a little too short, too slim. He's athletic enough to play, but, I mean, if you keep going with the small ball, it's going to get to the point where we have players the size of, like, Muggsy Bogues playing the four just because you want to have speed and athleticism over actual height. So I think Gay can fit the system a little better than Cousins, because unless, of course, Cousins runs a little more. Because I, I see George Carl's system more as he does have his, you know, half-court offense, but I think he enjoys in the more fast pace kind of a thing. And I think Cousins can bring that kind of action to, you know, 
the Kings and what they want to do. The problem is, is just stamina wise, he's not going to be able to run as much as, as you want from a point guard. So you kind of have to limit with that. But if I had to pick one person to stay, especially for this kind of system, system wise, I think Rudy Gay would make him better fit. But you're, I mean, the raw talent that you have with Demarcus Cousins, you can't let you can't let that go. Many teams have tried, and no, you'd have to be given like three first round draft picks, some proven veterans, and I'm not saying all stars, but just really decent veterans to try to pry away Cousins. So I mean, I think that's how it works. Yeah, it's it's going to be a big question mark. The reason why Cousins is more going to be on that block is because of the clashing of heads between George Carl and. Yeah. And cousins, and it hasn't happened yet, but you can sense, especially out here in Sacramento, when you hear George Carl talk on the radio with Grant Napier, or you see those post games interviews or after practice interviews of, as of right now, they're really not. This is how I've interpreted it. It's basically as of right now, we're not playing for anything. Practice is a little bit more light. Well, come that off season when you guys get a full training camp with me, you we're gonna clash, and it's because he has a strong mind, and both the team is gonna have a strong mind. They, they have a losing attitude. They have not won. They have not made the playoffs in almost nine right. years, almost a full decade since the Kings have even seen a playoff berth. So that rumor, and I want to see what your thoughts would be if this trade ever happened. There was a rumor at the trade deadline that the Kings were considering trading to Marcus Cousins for Ty Lawson and Kenneth Fareed. Now, there might be other assets in there, but that would be a deal that I can possibly still see happening for maybe this offseason. What about you? I, I wouldn't mind uh, doing a little more research into that kind of rumor. That's whew, that's a nice deal when you think about it, especially if the Nuggets can throw in a little cap space. Maybe even pry away Danilo Gallinari, considering that you know he's been hurt, but yet he's been tearing it. In those, I mean, he scored 41, 47, Seven. like some, 47 points, like something ridiculous. And I wouldn't mind it for the Kings aspect to see if they could probably try to lure, you know, Gallinari ahead, even if people think that he's fragile. But it certainly would help the mold. It would be like a Peja Stojakovic type of thing. But you get your point guard with Ty Lawson, who's one of the better interior finishers, which is, you know, something that you need your point guard to do, and he would do that very well. And Kenneth Reed is just absolute energy. He'd fit perfectly in what George Carl would want to do considering I believe he might have actually coached him in Denver. I'm not quite sure. I'd have to look up uh, when George Carl left. because I, he think was he got his, I think he got his rookie season. With, he I might have. Wasn't, so, it for, wasn't it for Reed and JaVale McGee at one point? And then after that season, yeah. when he after the year, that's when they left. Or it might have been the season before that. I don't know. So, so obviously for Reed would be able to fit into that kind of system perfectly. Mm. But if you can get that kind of type of return for DeMarcus Cousins, I'd say that's a definite definite win-win for that kind of a trade. But, I mean, I've heard so much about Cousins. I mean, same thing with uh, Rajan Rondo here in Boston. It's it's so hard to move, especially for the these good kind of deals. And Cousins is still hasn't hit his prime. He's going to grow, and he's going to be even better. Yeah, and, that, and you bring up Rondo. That's another thing, too. That's another possibility. The Kings have been rumored about Rondo since early offseason last year, or this year, going into the season by trade deadline. Like, they have been linked to Rondo. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent. Most say he's going to re-sign with Dallas, but there has been, you know, battle of heads there, too, between Rick Carlisle and Rondo. I mean, there's that little whole video yeah. of them arguing at the bench and then him getting benched the whole game, you know what I mean, or for the rest of the game. So... <laughs> There's that link, so maybe they bring in Rondo, but then what happens to Darren Collison? What happens to Ray McCallum? There's so many, there's so many loop, there's so many missing links into this team that you really don't know what's going to happen, especially with the Kings. Who are they going to draft now? I mean, yeah. what, what do you pick up if you don't? I don't, lose, I don't see a, cousins. I don't see a savior in this draft class. So I mean, it's almost like, eh, what, what's the point of drafting? Um, I think if Rondo doesn't sign with Dallas, which is a good possibility, just he seems to have killed his momentum. I could, if, let's say Rondo doesn't perform well in the postseason with Dallas, and Dallas is like, you know what, it just just isn't going to work as much as Mark Cuban wants it to. He goes, he might sign a one-year deal with Sacramento to prove his worth, because if it's going to be a bidding war between the services, it's going to depend on teams with the most amount of cap. Kings I don't think it's going to be a bidding war. I, I don't think Rondo so either, but he wants to believe that. That's the key. He wants to yeah. have that, and if it comes to who has the most money, it's between the Knicks and the Kings. I mean, there are other teams that have just as much, but I could see those two at least wanting to gauge the interest to see if they would want him. And I'd see him go to Sacramento instead of New York, personally. I mean, who wants to go there right now? 
Greg Monroe, but that's a different story for a different show. That's unconfirmed. I mean, people are saying that it's going to happen, but I'm like, the season isn't over yet. I can't, I can't trust that yet. But I have heard. I can trust it. I can trust it. <laughs> Detroit. If you guys watched the NBA Hounds podcast last week, I even said it. I said they burned Detroit burned the bridge. They kept Josh Smith too long. They tried to make yeah. three big men's work, and it didn't. You know what I mean? But that's that's a different show for a different podcast. <laughs> but. Right. Uh, Back onto the Rondo stuff, the, the biggest thing for Rondo is he's admitted that he's taken defensive off now. He yeah. he has shown that he needs to have the ball in his hands to be to, to be to be fair player. with that comment. I am a Rondo supporter, so you can you know put that kind of you could put bias to this. His words were kind of taken out of context, where there were it was wasn't that he just wasn't playing defense, although numbers would suggest that he wasn't. There were certain games where he would be a little more lax and take off because of Avery Bradley trying to prove his defensive uh, prowess. But I, I, his defense has taken a hit, I will say that. But ju- I want to just... 2011 uh, Rondo? Where's 2010 uh, Rondo? Where's that guy? Uh, I'm, I think that ACL injury, in all honesty, is still kind of haunt. I mean, Derrick Rose just had a good performance. I believe it was last night where he, like, assisted on 19 of potential 40... Or total... Like for, he helped the Bulls get around 41 points in like 28 minutes kind of thing. I think it's still kind of taken a while for him. And as much as he wants to deny that the ACL injury is affecting him because he is a warrior, and he, he beat the Heat in one playoff series with a broken arm, really. But exactly, I, I, yes. I, still, I still think that the ACL is kind of, kind of affecting him a little bit. But you're right, his defense is gone. Is gone and people down. forget about that too. People forget about how he, that he did have an ACL tear. You know what I mean? People mm-hmm. forget about that because he's forget that. he has such that he's like the per- Kendrick Perkins of point guards that mean mug where it's just like oh he must be fine because he always looks at that. It's like eh, I don't know. I honest, I honestly don't know if he's one hundred percent mentally there. But we'll see when the playoffs come. He usually shows up for primetime stuff and maybe he be able to rise his stock, but. I say if he doesn't, and Dallas like ends up losing in five games, maybe maybe swept or whatever, um, I could easily see Rondo going to Sacramento for a one-year deal. You know, kind of like what the NFL does to try to revitalize a career. Does that help? No, but I say that'd be the king since they have been linked to him. Would be the best time to try to like at least get his services for one year, then maybe try to be like convince them saying, "Look, it, we got something good here. Hall of Fame head coach who is like third in all-time in wins." DeMarcus Cousins. You'll love DeMarcus Cousins. You two are the same person. You're going to fight everybody. And Rudy Gay will get more points, so it's like you don't have to worry about shooting as much. You can just pass the ball. He'll, he'll take the open shot or a contested shot. He'll take the shot. <laughs> yeah, see, so with me, I wouldn't do it one year. I think if I was the Kings, my offer would be three years, $24 million with a player option in the third year. Oh, that would be, be my offer. That's not a bad deal. That's not at all. You get, you get You'd want to take it, yeah. You get $8 million. You get a point guard. You're going to have to overpay for Rondo. Even if you can't hit a free throw, you have to overpay for a point guard that can pass the ball. So, I mean, and that's what they want. They want someone who can push it. Rondo can push it. And to have – I honestly think it would be nice to see a backcourt tandem of Darren Collison and Rajon Rondo. Oh, that does sound very nice because Collison, as much as I didn't agree with the contract, he actually pretty – he performed pretty well for his contract before he got hurt, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah, yes, like he did. He, he used to so. start. Oh, what was it? It was either Dallas or Indiana where he was actually starting. Was and like oh, he no, did it was Indiana, he was starting, and then he took over in Dallas for a couple yeah. of games. Like, and he actually did pretty decent. Now, the money he was being thrown, I was kind of like, whoa, 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 that's a little, that's a little much, uh, Sacramento. I know you're the new owners are trying to impress the fans, but I thought it was a little much. But he actually performed very well for the kind of money that he was getting. Yeah. I like. I think uh, two because I I still think Rondo has defensive potential. I think he really is one of those players that when he's locked in, he's locked in. And I think oh, if, yeah. you get, if he's a, around a group of guys and you get Rudy Gay, Darren Collison, and of course Demarcus Cousins all to buy into this system, and I, and I think the biggest question is always going to be Demarcus Cousins. And right. if you bring in Rondo, that's going to throw in another wrench to it because. Rondo's going to need the ball in his hands. Rondo's going to need to be the guy to do something with anything on any team. He's going to have to control the ball. And I think Cousins likes to have the ball in the low post more than anybody else. But at the same time, what what will he do from there? I don't know because you're going to have three ball-dominant players, Rondo, Rudy Gay, and Cousins. They run two isolation players every single game. You'll see at least five to ten isolation plays for both Rudy and Cousins. So it's like – 
who's going to get the ball because who's going to get the ball now? And I think that actually benefits the team, but at the mm-hmm. same time, how will they blend in with that? And that's going to be the biggest question is how do they all mesh together? If you want to know if how that ever happens, right? If, if let's say Rondo does sign with Sacramento, if you want to know if he can mesh well with very, uh, you know, big personality kind of guys, just look at the 2008 Boston Celtics. You know, people oh, thought that, left. Well, he did leave, but look at what happened when they were starting out. Everyone looked at him as like, well, how is he this this point guard going to get the ball to these three, you know, Hall of Fame players? Now let's not get ahead of ourselves. Rudy Gay is not going to Springfield anytime soon. Cousins, I mean, the jury, I mean, for Hall of Fame wise, it's the jury is still out with that. I think Rondo, while he is ball dominant, in the half court, he will find the open man. That's mm-hmm. been his go to kind of thing. So I think it'd be more of a uh, conflict of if Rudy Gay feels that DeMarcus Cousins is getting it more because him and Rondo are playing buddy ball, or maybe it'd be the other way around. But I do know Rondo loves to distribute. He, like, you know how uh, Kevin Love back in Minnesota would love to rebound just to get the rebound numbers? Rondo is the same, only with assists. And yeah. while assists might benefit a team in you know offensive efficiency, getting more points than the other team, it can be just as selfish and, de- and just as detrimental for a team, just as with Kevin Love with Minnesota with the rebounds. So it's kind of like that. But it could work if, you know, Carl being Doc Rivers level, and I know that Doc and Rondo butted heads almost every day, probably like three times a day. But, you but there's still back. a lot of love between those two guys. You, Absolutely. You talk Doc, if you talk to Doc Rivers about Rondo, that's like the, they have that – little brother mentality for him i even kg and all of them they have little brother mentality for rondo i believe they still text each other too but um you're telling me george carl couldn't you know convince rondo to buy into his system and to like try to move into the way that he wants him to he george carl is more of a player coach you know he's not going to butt heads or at least he shouldn't unlike you know rick carlisle doc rivers who are very set in their ways so i think it could work but again in all it's all predicated in, on the playoffs and how that works. Like, if Dallas doesn't do well, then I can see the Kings maybe being able to swoop in to try to repackage his brand to try to make it be like, look, you can come here. Maybe people won't notice. Maybe people will. But it's a way for you to show that you are a top five point guard in the NBA and try to get back to that level. I think it would be a better shot at him repackaging and rebranding himself in Sacramento than in New York, if, since New York has been linked to get him, too. I think that would be the smartest business move. But it, it really... It depends on him. All right. Again, guys, this is the King's Car. I'm here with CJ Maffres, the NBA writer for HoundSports.com. You, this show, you already know, is sponsored by The Quality Shop. For quality clothes at a quality price, go to The Quality Shop located in downtown Roseville. We will be doing a live show there, so be sure to tune in and follow me on Twitter at VM Center to find out when. And also, we will be giving away sweaters with this logo on it as I pull it up right here. Yes, so this will be on the show. The, we're going to be giving away sweaters with that logo on it. Sat Kings Nation sweaters. We'll be giving that away very, very soon. So be sure to find out how to win with that. Again, follow me on Twitter at VM Center. All right. I kind of want to move into another subject here because you hit me up on Twitter about this, and I didn't get to talk about it on my last show. But I know exactly Sost- where you're going. Costillo. Oh, yeah. Okay. You're a fan of it. You're a fan of the nickname. You won him Absolutely. in Boston. I, I read it. I read the tweet. You want him in oh, Boston. Yes. I want him you in Boston solely, solely for marketing, solely for jersey sales, for uh, advertising, all that kind of stuff. You guys have a gold mine with that right now. I read Bleacher Report. Uh, I believe it was by Dan Carson, uh, who kind of like posts the funnier trending stuff on Bleacher Report because I saw – uh, headline saying Nick Stalkis or my brother found uh, the story said you need to see this and I'm reading it and I've laughed so hard that I swear neighbors were knocking on my door wondering is everything okay like why are you screaming so hard it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen and the fact that Nick Stalkis you know was like yes they call me sauce it's okay I don't know why how it started oh now I found out that's pretty funny I dig it. Yeah, Yeah, like he does. Like he has a handshake now where they imitate putting sauce on something. Uh, I believe it was the president or the CEO of the team was like, "Will there be a sauce Castillo jersey uh, on the horizon?" 
possibly. Like, I was like, yeah, that's going to get people interested because as sad as it is, you know, the season's been lost for a while, at least for playoff, playoffs-wise. So bring some buzz around it. This is wonderful buzz. I, I so wish he was in Boston. I would plaster him on every billboard, giving him, you know, a funny mustache, pretending to put hot sauce on a hot dog or a cheese. Bar. Like, I'd love that. It's so funny. Absolutely. Yeah. I still don't like the nickname. <laughs> I'm not a fan of it. I just died. I thought on the ranks of nicknames, I like I like the old school nicknames. Like let's say like the go, the greatest of all time. Go with that, or or just something simple. What right. was it? Uh, oh, I cannot think of the other nicknames you can think of. Like like the Durantula. That's crazy good. That that that's is a good one. Definitely. That's a good one. Or, or or the Slim Reaper. I like that about KD. The King for King James. You know what I mean? Like stuff. Sauce Costello. I mean, really? That's <laughs> I, nothing. You got to talk to the closed captioning people. If it wasn't for them, this wouldn't have happened. Which is what makes it even funnier. It was very organic, which I think makes it be- not I'm not saying it's better than the Durantula. That will be one of my favorites too. But the oh, fact of how how organic it was, how funny people took it, and like if if you read if you read the article that it was on a Bleacher Report, like that that also made that enhanced it for me because the the writer was like. I now know how life will. I don't know how life was able to continue without hearing this kind of nickname and how funny this is. And it's just you know, it's like keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> and he's owned yeah. up to it too. It's not like normally for a rookie, you would think like it's a hazing thing or you know the team picking fun of him. But they're almost like taking, making it, uh, give or giving that nickname a culture of its own, which I don't know. Maybe it will give him more confidence. It seems to me like Stalkus was a pretty it. good. Uh, three-point shooter and actually really athletic uh, perimeter defender that like not many people thought of when he was at Michigan. I thought he was a solid selection at eight. Maybe would have been better in ten at the, at the highest, but it wasn't like a huge reach. But maybe this will bring him confidence to the point where it's like people are going to wear his nickname jersey or even his regular jersey. They'll be there for bobblehead nights with his nickname, with him dressed up as whatever. Like it, it, it can be said how much confidence can really help a player. A lot of people say with quarterbacks in football. Half of or twenty percent of it is actually you know ability, and the other eighty is just how confident you are. And if you just feel like, oh, you know, thirty-five down, I could I could get us get get us back in this game. I'm the quarterback. They feel like that's uh, a big contributor of how good a quarterback can play. So I think the same thing can go with Stalkus, and I so hope he's able to continue on his career, and not burn out. I really do, especially especially because of the nickname. I I would definitely want a, a Sas Castilla jersey. If I Definitely. get one, I'll send it to you just because I would have never want to put it on. I, can, I, don't, I don't want no Sasuke seal on my back. Oh, my but God. I do like it that when he does score, they go sauce. That's what they yell. <laughs> they go sauce. That's my awesome. favorite. The, the, my favorite gif of all of it is when you see there's a picture of him like holding like like one of these like the fingers holding signs, but they changed it to where he's wearing the Tabasco sauce. Like, <laughs> yeah. He puts on a mustache. I think that is hilarious. Like, that one's funny, but I don't want to have that on the on my back. I would never. If I get a T-shirt, I'll give it to you because I really don't. I'll send me your email or send go, me your go, address. I'll mail it to go, you. Go to one. Go to one where it's a free giveaway. That way, it's like oh, it's that was Sauce Castillo free. night. Yeah, they gave yeah. away free T-shirts. Yeah. So if I ever get one, I'd I'd give it up. I would not oh. want it. Oh, I'm a, I'm a friendly. I'm a giveaway type of guy. I'm friendly. That's awesome. You, you'll have me as a contributor as much as you as much as you want now for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, since the Kings aren't in the playoffs, you know, I still kind of want to hit on it on this show. So let's kind of jump onto the two teams you mainly cover, being an NBA writer for Hound Sports, and that's the Portland Trail Blazers and the Boston Celtics. And let's start off with the Boston Celtics, since we were talking about Rondo. There's a player out there that is a former King, Isaiah Thomas, arguably six man of the year this year. That's completely up for debate. Arguably? Arguably. <laughs> Jamal, Crawford, t- Jamal Crawford is still right. a nice year. Right. So you can you take down the King. I think you got to beat the King, and he's the King right now. Jamal Crawford is a six man of the year. I still yeah. think he has a strong chance of getting it. But they're currently the seventh seed Boston is. What are their chances of actually making the playoffs, do you think? And also, if they stay at seven or eight, where would you – you as I think you're a fan of Boston, correct? So yes. where would you kind of want to see them land seven or eight against either Atlanta or was it uh, Cleveland? Cleveland. Well, uh, they will be facing Cleveland today at three, so it's about to start in about you know twenty thirty minutes, kind of a thing. 
Um, Eastern Standard Time, guys. We're yes, playing. Eastern Standard, yes. Got to remember that. Um, they, or the Cavs, I should say, aren't playing Kevin Love, aren't playing J.R. Smith, aren't playing Irvin, and aren't playing LeBron at all. That's what uh, early reports are saying. So they look to have a really good chance. If they win t- uh, today... And if Indiana loses, and I believe they're facing Oklahoma City, then the Celtics have clinched. Now, what position would be the best, seven or eight? To me, it really doesn't matter. Just get it. <laughs> I, I don't care who the opponent is. It's going to be fun regardless. I well, I mean, I'm not blind to the fact thinking that they're going to win. I mean, if they faced Atlanta, I think they'd have a better shot because especially, especially before the All-Star break, the Celtics uh, made a huge upset at home. You know, in Boston, so, I mean, take that with a grain of salt. But they were able to upset them, and could could I see them stealing maybe one game in Atlanta? Absolutely. Do I see them beating them in a seven-game series? Yeah, but, I mean, you're talking about LeBron, Kyrie Irving, Shumper, J.R. Smith. I'm not mentioning Kevin Love. I am not a Kevin Love believer. Haven't been since he was at UCLA. Go Washington Huskies, I'll say that. <laughs> but, um, because of Isaiah Thomas, too. But, yeah. um... The the real and it's funny I joke about this because I went to school in Ohio so I have a lot of Cavs fans that are friends I, I know a few people who work into that uh, type of area for sports the real MVP of that team has been Mozgov he has been absolutely pivotal with their rim protection especially since he's never lost out. in Cleveland he's never no lost he's in Cleveland. I mean let's let's put that out there so I mean I, would it be a better matchup to face Cleveland over Atlanta no. But the Celtics aren't going past the first round. If they go past the first round, there's going to be a lot of crazy things that happen in not only this uh, city, but probably the NBA landscape. They're going to be looking at this like, what in the world is going on? They're doing this rebuilding thing wrong, rebuilding, done the wrong way, the Brad Stevens project, right? Is but Brad Stevens comes of the year? He should be. I think if they make the playoffs, and it's hard to say with a losing record because the other person who I think actually could overtake – well. I wrote an uh, earlier piece of why he should win the coach or uh, coach of the year. He won't because of the losing record, but the fact he made the playoffs should at least give him some merit. Should I hope he gets some votes? That's really all I can say. I'm not expecting of him winning it, but the fact that he took, you know, he, he should be called the head coach alchemist because he literally turned lead into gold. Evan mm-hmm. Turner, Evan Turner, three triple doubles in his career, all with Brad Stevens. He's tied for the second most in the league with triple doubles behind. Russell Westbrook's, you know, 12 or 11. But, like, he's been able to really turn this thing around in a way that I don't think many people thought it would be this quick. And now you're kind of seeing how smart Stevens is as a coach. But the coach of the year should be uh, Kerr, without a doubt. Golden State. I mean, this is... Or Boninger, whatever. Atlanta's coach. I like that. They're they're the number one team. Well, the number one team in the NBA is is Golden State. But I will say, did you know that the team didn't want Steve Kerr? They were all like, why are we getting rid of Mark Jackson? And, like, I I was thinking, like, potential mutinies, uh, just players, coaches clashing the whole time. He just made Stephen Curry and Klay Thompson even better, which I didn't think was even possible, really. But I I would kind of give it to him more just the fact that no one wanted him at the start, and now they're like, boy, don't we look stupid for not wanting him. But, uh, no, uh, for uh, down in Atlanta, I mean, no superstar. uh, Kerr. It started off where it's like um, Curry and Clay Thompson weren't flat out saying we don't want him, but there was a lot of uh, mumbling going on, like why are we getting rid of Mark Jackson considering he gave us like our most uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. positive so happened, stretch. Yeah, so what happened was was Mark Jackson had a big collision with the front office. That's what yeah. happened. That's why they yep. let him go. But, but the players didn't want him Clay to. loved him. They all loved him. When they yeah. brought in Steve Kerr, the biggest rumblings was was how was what did what was Sturt, Kerr going to bring in being, you know, a rookie head coach going to bring coming right into it, you know, because he was he was there was a lot of talks of him going to New York. And yeah, good job, good job of not choosing that job because look what Derek Fisher's done, nothing. Well, so, I, I don't think Derek Fisher is going to be winning Coach of the Year anytime soon either. He's but probably, he should be fired. I don't know how he's one of the top <laughs> paid coaches this year, and but, th- they're going to get the number one pick, so. But Kerr, Kerr, I think, definitely gets it for the kind of turmoil the team potentially could have faced if the team didn't do well, and they're the best team in the league. So, I mean, the fact that he was able to not only say, look, it, I'm going to be better than Mark Jackson, 
he was better than everyone this year, which to me is impressive. We gotta look at Popovich too, but I really do hope Stevens gets some consideration because could do you put Rick Carlisle, Popovich, no. or even Kerr on the Celtics? You think they'd be doing this well? Popovich, Kerr, you know Carlisle. You... That Carlisle is one of the best in-game coaches in the NBA. He I is just, best at in-game coach. It's hard for me to predict to see if he's able to turn this team around the way Stevens did. Popovich would be the only one who I could see doing it, but boy, he has had Tim Duncan and David Robinson, not to, to add with you know Ginobili, Parker, and now with Kawhi Leonard too. So I mean, he's got himself some really good players. I mean, he's got himself some Hall of Famers. So, but yeah, I, but I will take, give him. Credit. You take out those Hall of Famers, and they he he rested. I don't know if you guys remember this for last year or two years ago. Rested all three Hall of Famers. Spurs nearly beat the Miami Heat. Yep, they got fine. They got fine for that game. That's because of Popovich. Popovich makes sure every single one of these players on this team know on his team knows their role, what they're supposed to do, and how to act if any one player is not you know filling that void or doing their role. They're like a clock, and if one thing flows out, they know how to replace it real quick. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but absolutely, we'll never know. But Brad Stevens, I think, comes in third place this year in Coach of the Year. That's I'll take personally. That. He takes third place. That he's gonna get. He's gonna get votes. There's everyone is put on notice. Especially Bill Simmons has been putting it on notice <laughs> that Brad Stevens should be put on for Coach of the Year. He's not gonna get it. It's gonna be a coin flip between Kerr and uh, Bode. I can't pronounce his last name. Is it Budinger or Budinger or whatever his last name? I'm I'm not even gonna Bonheiser. try. I know. Funny thing about Bill Simmons, actually, considering we're both obviously fans of the teams in this area, we share the same birthday. Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, I, I was a little taken aback. I was like, oh, that explains almost half of the things I do. <laughs> All right, so let's let's go back to the Kings real quick just because I, I'm not really going to hit on the Portland just yet. We will get there, guys. <sighs> but I kind of want to get back to the Kings just because we're talking about Boston. We're talking about Isaiah Thomas. He's yep. playing great. Would he be playing this great if he was on a better team? Because like when he was with Sacramento, he was putting up twenty points a night, six assists. He goes to this to the. He should have started in Sacramento. Sacramento. <laughs> he was start- yeah, but he came off the bench. He was starting. Then he averaged twenty and six. They had three starters averaging twenty points a game. Hasn't been done yep. in years with Rudy Gay, Cousins, and Thomas. Now he's in Boston, coming as six man. I think he's averaging like the same numbers, twenty one and six right now. Uh, if you combine his uh, time with uh, Phoenix, it would be the same. But I think he's averaging around sixteen points with Boston, which is, oh, not complaining whatsoever, but I, I do think it's a little lower. And again, he was hurt too, so. So if if you're looking at it, is it is he scoring this much and being this efficient? Because it's, I mean, let's be honest, Boston is still a bad team. Yeah. They, they, they have a bunch of Jay Crowders, Evan Turner, Kelly Olenek. I mean, they'll, okay, you got me with Olenek. I like the first two you mentioned. <laughs> Jay, Jay Crowder is nice. He's young, he's improving, but he's 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 nothing special, you know what I mean? Like no, no. Yeah, I no, mean, he made the NBA. He's special, but Evan Turner, you, it's Evan Turner. We we just established that earlier. I mean, you 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 take what you can get with him, definitely. Right, but you you do have pieces. I, I like Marcus Smart. I think he's going to be keep keep on improving. I like Jared Selinger. I like what they've been doing with Evan Turner, Jay Crowder. I mean, he's a work in progress still, but Isaiah Thomas is their closing guy. Yep. You know what I mean? He's the guy that he's going to score. He's going to shoot as many times as he wants to, you know, but is he doing this because he's on a bad team? Like if he was on a good team, would he be doing this? Well, I mean, I guess you can look at it. Maybe he's at the same caliber as Jamal Crawford. You know, I mean, he's on a great team and look at the numbers he puts up. He does very well. I think he gets a little more leeway with the teams that he's on because he's so offensively gifted. Like one of his greatest assets is uh, pick and roll offense, you know, whether it be dishing it, to the big guy or whoever's giving him the screen, or whether he just takes a shot right at, uh, right after using the screen. Like he's one of the best at that. It's been a treat to watch, especially this year. But I mean, he's been an offensive closer. You know, like fourth quarter. You know, ball in his hands. He's trying to get the team to win. He's been like that since college. One of my favorite NCAA uh, moments, which it wasn't. I actually don't think it was in the tournament. It was the Pac-12 championship, where Isaiah Thomas nailed a buzzer beater. Where you hear. Uh, Gus Johnson just say cold blood and that was it. I mean that, that, that explains Isaiah Thomas to a T. He just, I think, because of uh, his height in basketball, uh, really puts a chip on his shoulder, saying I can play here. And by far, he's one of the best little guys I've ever seen. Like people talked about Earl Boinkins, Nate Robinson, and I like them too. 
You know, I liked them a lot. They weren't, I don't think they were anywhere close to what Isaiah Thomas brings to a basketball team. Nate Robinson can dunk, and he's very exciting, and I loved the energy but that he Nate brought Thomas to Boston when he was in there. But, but I mean, it's just, yeah, it's exactly, it's the same thing. Like, I think Thomas is much better. So put him on any team. Put him on the Spurs. Put him on uh, Memphis. Oh, Memphis would love to have him to come off the bench. Are you kidding me? They would love off his Off the bench, shoot. but is he a, off the bench? That's what we keep saying. So he's not a starter. Oh, no, I think he could start. I'm just saying for his role right now, uh, if you want to put him on a good team that needs a point guard, why not swap him in Dallas for Rondo? I can't because see why Dante you... Ellis would have to have. Ball. I think they sh- they temp- we can keep going back to Dallas, but Dallas tempered with the best offensive team. They had Monte Ellis basically running point, and having Jameer Nelson and all those other you know fill in point guards, they were doing very very well offensively. I think you put the ball in another person's hand. Isaiah Thomas needs the ball in his hands as well. Probably not as much as Rondo, but right. he can at least knock down a three. So that's that's a little different. Well, if you want to pick another team, look at New Orleans. I mean. Drew Holiday hasn't really panned out the way that they would want. I would. Tyreek has. Well, I mean, Tyreek doesn't exactly play the one, and he is more of a ball dominant three who can play the one. He's he's like Evan Turner, where it's like you know you're six eight, six seven, but you you have the handles of a ball handler. So why not put Isaiah Thomas there, who at least if he isn't as ball dominant on that kind of type of roster? Because I mean, we all know the stars Anthony Davis. So why not have you know Tyreek take away a lot? Of, take some of the ball handling stuff away. But you're telling me you can't find Isaiah Thomas for, uh, you know, Ray Allen type of role being able to shoot. As long as he can shoot and score a lot of points and drive to score points and shoot free throws because he gets fouled. Oh, boy, this guy gets hammered a lot. He, does. he gets hammered. But, I mean, um, you, you can put him on there. I, I definitely could see. Like, let's say you just straight up put Isaiah Thomas on uh, New Orleans. That team is definitely not fighting for the eighth seed. That's for sure. It's funny that we keep bringing up names. We're bringing up Tyreek. We're bringing up, you know, uh, Isaiah. We're bringing up Monte, who was rumored to come. To, like, all these players were, like, either on the team or rumored to come onto this team. And they get put on different teams, and they're 16. Tyreek Evans won Rookie of the Year. <laughs> goes, the, goes to New Orleans and now is putting up numbers. And he's he's been running the it took point, him a while, though. point forward. It took him a while in New Orleans. I think the Kings kind of gave up a little bit on him because I liked him in Sacramento. I thought he did a pretty decent job, and he, he gave him like a young uh, influx of talent kind of thing. There was, there was talent there, but it just it never kind of got together, he I guess. He loved it in Sacramento. You talked yeah. to him about Sacramento. He loved it here. But, you know, it was a, it was a, you had to choose between the two. Cousins, Reek, they went with Cousins. Uh, I still think that's the good choice, but the team just still isn't at that point yet where right. – what are they going to do next? There's still so many, like, power forward. They, do they want to get a stretch four? Do they want to get a b- shot-blocking center? Which Cousin is very much improved on. He's been protecting the rim very well this year, con- mm-hmm. considering his averages. But do they want a shot-blocker behind him and move Cousins to the four? What do they want to do there? They don't even know. You know, a forward position, they have Rudy Gay, but they've been trying to move him down to the four spot and then having Omri Caspi play the three. You know, so it's they really don't know what they want to do yet. They don't have an identity yet, and I think that's what they brought George Carl in to make an identity. But they just don't have it. And it's just weird to see Isaiah Thomas. I think would fit in this perfect system of what they're trying to go for with Carl because of how fast he moves. Tyreek again, another player who I think if he comes in here, how fast he can move up and down the floor. He's like a blur. You know what I mean? And how he yeah. can get into the paint with his euro step. Like they would be perfect fits now. Now, I know some of these moves were made, like Tyreek was made during the Maloof era, but Isaiah Thomas was made in this new new, new regime era. So I, I think we all have to take this with a grain of salt because we haven't seen Collison in the system either. He's been injured, so yeah. and he's out for the season. So Who is it right now? Salt, right. We all have to take it with a grain of salt, but, I mean, it's still just a disappointing fact that we don't get to have these players that are just su- succeeding so well in other areas and other teams. Yeah. To not have them back on this team, like why couldn't they do it here? And that's always just a big question. That's always a big question with any with any player wherever they go. But all right, guys, let's move on back over into the the playoff race because I do want to get your thoughts on Portland. Just a quick little you know, one two hit on them, everything like yeah. that. But uh, I asked this on the NBA Hound Show, and that's with Wesley Matthews. What happens with him? He's he's gonna does he does he gonna resign? And he's not gonna be for a max deal like he's hoping for now. He was max deal money. Before the injury, at least I thought so. I thought New York yeah, was going to offer that to him or L.A. Now with the injury, 
I mean, that's going to drop considerably. I, I don't think it will. I think a team's going to give him the max. I really do. Max he, money? Wow. He was having his best season on, on you know, everything. His shooting was better. His wow. defense was immensely better. Look at Portland right now. Why aren't they going to be winning a title this year? It's going to be wow. because they lost Wesley Matthews. It, it, I mean, it's weird saying that, you know, D- Damian Lillard and LaMarcus Aldridge are the two big guns, but this team has lost ev- all momentum to go there. Now Aaron Afalo uh, injured as well as Darrell Wright injured too. So, I mean, their, their guards and perimeter play is vastly thinned down, not looking too good. CJ McCollum, he, he could shoot and he could do well too. I hope he does well, but he's not the same caliber as Wesley Matthews. I think he was the most important aspect of that team. Don't like everyone talks about how the Spurs are so automatic. You look at the chemistry that uh, Portland was playing before this, uh, before the Wesley Matthews injury. It was just as good, if not better. They really knew, but I think nice. no. I, Wesley Matthews, he will get max money. Someone will overpay. Do I think he's worth it? He's close. He's so close, but I don't. I don't think I would give him max money. But I, I the, Portland can't pay that. Goodness, no, I can't. I can't see an Achilles injury. It won't uh, be Sacramento, a, for, don't worry. <laughs> a, for a jump shooter, max money. I would I mean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. If the Kings offered him max money, I would take it, but because it's Wesley I like Wesley Matthews. I oh, think yeah. his game is a Paul Pierce young guy. Because you know in Paul Pierce how he would be able to post, he can shoot uh-huh. the threes. I think Wesley Matthews has that same game. He's so he's so strong and so skilled at that level. It's like I really like watching him play, but when you Just see don't it, for- don't forget, though, the cap is rising exponentially. Not this year, but next year. Next so year, if you give if you give Max money now, all of a sudden next year it's going to look like a bargain compared. Right. It's just I can't I can't see. So Max money will the, probably. I think the have team Max money. If he gets Max money, there's only two teams I see giving that to him. New York. L. A. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. That's the only two. May. I don't know. And I think with the Kings, I, I, the biggest thing is offseason you have to watch for is what happens between the two. And that's yeah. what's going to be the biggest question. And that's why I keep, that's why the show is called Rudy and DeMarcus shut down for the season. I think they want to keep those two healthy. So if anything happens during this offseason, there's nothing wrong. Right. You know what I mean? And you there's a possible great addition. Oh my god, if he was if you put him with DeMarcus Cousins and Rudy Gay, oh my word, that perimeter would be just phenomenal. Yeah, but then what would you do with Ben McLemore? Make him walk off the bench? He's improved vastly this year. Trade him? I mean, I would take Wesley Matthews over McLemore, and I think, and I thought McLemore would be one of the be- one of the Injured better players. I, it, it, I would take the so gamble. Rough. I think the risk is. So I think the reward so is worth the risk. I, I think the Kings have good. nice assets. The Kings have such nice assets. I like Darren Carlson. I like having Andre Miller. I like having Ben McLemore. Yeah. I want to see what happens with Sauce Costello, aka Nick Stauskas. I want to. I want to see what happens with those. I like Ryan Hollins, although he doesn't get he doesn't get any minutes. I think Carl Landry was completely overpaid, but I like him. You know what I mean? I like what he oh, can yeah. do, but he just doesn't fit the system correctly. And as much as every other Sacramento King fan really doesn't like this player. I like Jason Thompson. <laughs> I think he is pro- arguably the best defender on this Kings team. And I also like Reggie Evans just because it's Reggie Evans and he's so uh, How can you not like Reggie Evans? Yeah. He's a bully. He's a bully. <laughs> so funny to watch. But one more trade offer just to see what would you do. So I'm I'm making this trade offer to you. Okay. Right I'm now. the Kings executive. You're, you're the Kings. Would you take this deal? Okay. I will give you the number one pick this year. I'm the New York Knicks. Okay. I will give you the number one pick this year, the number two or the second round pick next year, a first round pick the following year, and you can also have. It's gonna have to be a shooter. Tim Hardaway Jr. No, they want him. <laughs> I would prob Alexi Chavez. No, because he's an unrestricted free agent. I just those three picks. No, because you need a player. Mm-hmm. Those three play, picks and a player. Let's go with Tim Hardaway Jr. Would you take that deal? For who? For Cousins. No. Three. No. You get two first rounders. You get Jaleel Okafor. Or I, I think Cousins will be better than Okafor. 
who will ever be personally. I think Cousins is such a rare skill set, so it's like this is the year. Or we do a three-way trade deal. I see the Kings making them. This ownership group has had everyone flipping and flopping because they don't know what I would. They want. I will say this. If you could promise uh, 2016 first, first overall pick, I would con- seriously consider that for Cousins, whoever gets that. Ben Simmons. So Whoa. so back-to-back first and then well, second. No, no, no. I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, if somehow you could promise the Kings getting 2016 first overall pick for Ben Simmons, but it would cost you DeMarcus Cousins, I would seriously debate that. Now... I probably would keep Cousins because he's such a rare talent. But boy, Ben Simmons. If you haven't seen you know, some of the games that he's been playing with uh, Team USA scrimmages and uh, McDonald's All-American highlights, you should look him up. He did pretty well. He wasn't the best person out there, but he's the only one who's NBA ready now. All right, guys. Well, that's our show for today. Leave you guys' comments in the comment section below. Let us know what you guys think. Do you guys, who do you guys have it going for? Is it going to be Rudy Gay? Is it going to be Cousins? Which ones will be moved? Or do you think we're going to see him next season on the same team? I, if to, Personally, if I had to give an over-under on a – I would start it out at 60%. That's my over-under. Do you, do you go over-under you see them on the same team at 60%? No, I, I'd, I'd be a little higher. I'd say probably 85%. Okay, see, I'm going to – I'm gonna go with seventy. I'm gonna okay. go. I'm gonna go a little bit over, but the over under is sixty fans. So you put your guys' over unders in there. It's at sixty. Sixty percent chance one of them is gonna be moved. Now you guys leave your comments in the comment section below. Put your down your over unders. Put down who you think is gonna be moved, or if you think we are completely crazy. All right. Also, let us know what you guys are gonna be looking forward in the playoffs. Do you guys want to see Isaiah Thomas make the playoffs? Do you guys want to watch Boston in there? You know your Portland Trailblazers ideas. You know, CJ, tell them where they all can find you so they can get all their Portland Trailblazer, Boston Celtics, and all NBA news from you. Uh, well, you can follow me on Twitter at CJ Maffris, and it's spelled out C S E A J J A Y, then my last name, Maffris. I retweet all kinds of reporters from Boston and Portland, so to keep you up to date, as well as you can find me at Hound Sports. I write for Portland and for the Boston Celtics, so. Feel free to follow me there, and if you want up-to-date kind of news from those teams, I'm more than happy to retweet and give you information. All right, guys, and you guys know you guys can find me on Twitter at VM Center, writing for SatKingsNation.com, GoldenGateSports.com, HoundSports.com, and all things like that. Although, actually, I'm not really writing for Hound Sports anymore, but that's a little side note. I don't know <laughs> if you knew that, but it's kind of true. I kind of don't write for them anymore. That's why they don't sponsor the show anymore. But anyways, that's on a different note for a different type of thing, so that really is a side note for behind-the-scenes type of stuff. But anyways, guys. Thank you guys all for watching. Leave your guys' comments in the comment section below. If you're not a subscriber yet, hit that subscribe button and be a good friend and hit that thumbs up button. All right, until next time, Kings fans, bye-bye.